Hello people of YouTube, I hope you're well. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 23 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma's Knits. Welcome if you're a new viewer, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Thank you for joining me today for this new episode. Um, I've just been on vacation for a week, so it's been almost three weeks I think since we've last seen each other. Um, quite a few things happened, so we will talk about knitting and about sewing today and I will show you some of my recent purchases. I said I wouldn't buy any more yarn, but I didn't... yeah, I did. Life happens anyway. <laughs> I didn't plan on getting anything, but I... yeah, it happened. Um, well, grab a whip, grab your cup of tea, of coffee, or your gin, or anything you want to drink, your favorite activity of the moment, and uh, let's go! I hope you've had a good last couple of weeks, mine have been pretty busy. I have two finished objects to show you today. First one is my secret sweater. It's absolutely not in season, but I love it. Um, it's I finished it on the 31st, so it was the last day of the cal which I was taking part in. It's so soft and so warm. It's actually not warm, it's hot. Uh, it's, it has cashmere and silk and mohair and baby alpaca, so it's like really something for the colder month and not not really wearable at the moment. I just put it on for five minutes to take a couple of pictures for my Ravelry project so I could actually update the cal and uh, show that I had finished it. But, so it's a v-neck sweater which is really basic. Uh, I chose to do an i-cord um, border on the whole uh, neck line. Okay, yeah, because she suggests that you actually stop here at the shoulder and um, so lace actually along the, the neckline. But lace is not my favorite thing and I didn't find any which I really liked. And so I decided to go for an eye cord all around. Um, I I have two two um, camisoles which I have which have um, lace hard in the front so I can still wear it with them if I want some lace. What can I tell you about it? It's fairly easy. It's really nothing complicated apart from the neckline, the eye cord thing. What I can say is that I actually really hate picking up stitches but you have to in some cases. Don't really have a choice. I have no idea how many stitches there were on the on the whole length of the thing but quite a few. The only changes I did, I think I told you about them last time, is that I actually, um, starting at the elbow, I decreased twice as many times as was recommended. I don't know if that's the correct way to say it, but I end up with 44 stitches instead of 54, I think. I don't remember exactly how many I was supposed to have in the end, but I have way less so that the sleeve would still be fitted, or at least the, the wrist. It's a really basic bind off at the end, didn't want anything too complicated. Uh, the body is also slightly shorter than was required by the pattern. She said to knit 40 centimeters and then do 4 centimeters of ribbing. But I uh, I tried it on and it was long enough for my taste already, so I just stopped at I think so 35 and uh, and did the ribbing. Yeah, nothing particular to say except that I think it will get a lot of wear in the colder month, but definitely not right now. I will make a short video and take some better pictures later today when it's not. Although the sun has gone behind um, clouds at the moment, but it's still really warm. Yeah, we'll take a couple of pictures when the sun is not directly shining into my bedroom <laughs> so that it doesn't look too bad. Uh, that was my first finished object. It took me one and a half months. I started it on March 13th 
and finished it so on May 31st. Uh, I'm really proud of myself there. It's the first time I take so such short time to finish a sweater. It's not really short, I am perfectly aware of that, but for me it is. The second finished object which I have to show you today is a skirt. It's a sewing project. It was actually a um, common project with my friend Kelly. I don't know if she actually finished it because we started it together yesterday. Um, but yeah, she ran into some trouble at home and uh, I'm not sure. She said I could finish it on my own today. So I, well, I could finish it on my own, generally speaking. So I finished this morning with, I just had the, uh, the hem to sew. So it's chambray, chambray, I think that's how you say it. Um, it's black, it's left over from my aster blouse. And uh, yeah, and the, the, the lining is just for the belt and for the inside of the pocket. Um, it's basic, well, it's cotton, which I bought in, in February on one of the stands. I think the vendor was Belgium, Belgian and it's called Le Tissu du Chien Vert. Pretty sure that's it. Anyway, so I chose, it. it's the Mille Une Perle. I'm not even sure I actually mentioned the name of the pattern in the French podcast. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's the Mille Une Perle by Yvan Soufflet and um, it was really nice, but sometimes the pattern was a little confusing despite it being 50 pages or something because all the explanations are so very detailed. Uh, it's the D version that has the uh, the folds on the side. You have several versions, one with no fold, one with a um, line of buttons in the middle, one with folds starting in the middle and two pockets, and one with just one pocket and the folds on this side. I am not sure yet because I'm supposed to um, to sew there two lines to like, really fix the elastic and the folds, but I'm not sure if I actually want to do that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I tried it on. It's fine. So maybe I will just leave it, leave it that way. The hem is uh, shorter than uh, intended because I didn't see when I actually cut the fabric that it was not folded properly and one of the sides was like almost three centimeters shorter than what it should have been. So I just left it at that. I didn't have enough fabric left to cut it again. So I just left it like that. And when it was time to hem it, I just, yeah, I just evened out everything. So here's my second and all finished object. Yeah, and that's, I only have two this week. Well, only two is fine already. Look at what I brought from London. Harry and Meghan commemorate, commemorate it? Cup for the date of the wedding. Because we arrived on that Saturday. It was a bit of a mess, but since we were in London and not in Windsor, it was fine. But I bought this cup from Liberty of London because it was not as kitsch as... I don't know if you say kitsch in English, I think so. Yeah, it was more decent than a lot of the other cups which I saw. So I went for that one. I paid way too much money for it, but that's not really a problem. Inside is the golden turmeric tea from Higher Living Organic. The Indian elixir, whatever, turmeric, ginger, licorice and rose petals. It's really good, but it does stain. So I showed you my finished objects. I can show you what my works in progress. I have two and a bit. So the first one is my uh, Kovastin socks from Vera Veli Making. And I have to say that it's not putting me in good conditions to actually start loving socks. It's my first pair ever. And I think I made several mistakes when choosing it. I like the pattern, so I'm not going to rip them off, but it's not really easy. Well, I can't get it into my head what exactly I'm supposed to do when. I haven't memorized it yet. And the, the yarn is very dark. It's too cool sock yarn, so it's finished wool and, and nylon. 
it's really good it, it's not there is no problem with the yarn itself it's just that it's so dark that it's actually pretty hard to follow i'm not even sure that i can show you anything of the pattern you have kind of a right you will probably see better on the picture anyway so you have a kind of a cable in the front it's a faux cable and yeah they would probably look better on my feet but for that i need to finish them first and yeah i'm not i'm not a fan of socks so far but i'd like to really get into knitting socks even if i will probably never be an expert at them but so i i need to persist in these the second work in progress is something that gives me much more pleasure <laughs> it's the shine mittens by uh pia camerborn from the camerbornia podcast they are beautiful but i can actually see that my tension has really improved because it's the same pattern all over but you have some lines where the white is almost invisible and somewhere the 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 maroon is almost invisible which is oh just slapped myself in the face with that um <laughs> yeah it's it's getting better but it's, they're not perfect by far at least this hand the right hand will not be perfect so i can show you how it fits the pattern calls for a number thanks to my computer for telling me that whatever just finished installing so the pattern calls for number two size two millimeter needles but i know that i'm a tight knitter so i knit the the cuff in 2.25 and it's fine it's snug but it's not tight but i when i as soon as i started going on the hand it was really really too tight basically cutting off my blood circulation which is not something that you want so I went for two and a half and it's much better. They will be snug, but they will not prevent blood circulation in my hands. I need my hands. The pattern is really, really nice. I love that flower pattern on the cuff and these on the back. Yeah. Bit complicated because I went, I was a bit tight when I, I don't know why, when I made the thumb so I have the there it's a bit sketching on my finger when I pull it off but it's not that big of a problem I can probably fix it later so here you have the first part of the first mitten yeah I'm knitting them with Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight I think the colors are one that's the white and uh, 134 that's the I don't know, I think they consider it eggplant or maroon, whatever. I like having them with me in the in the subway. It's much easier now that I've passed the thumb because the pattern is basically just repeating itself. And this one I managed to memorize. So I just have my small bag and uh, I knit this way. I actually had really fun encounters in the subway lately where um, an Icelandic lady actually told me that uh, she uh, knits a lot and uh, that she was very um, that she really liked the pattern of these um, so i gave her the name of it in case she wants to make them yeah that's my two real works in progress and yeah it's really funny that i actually enjoy knitting mittens a lot and mitts but i really don't have any particular love for socks just yet because mm. they're not that different generally speaking anyway my last work in progress is actually um is actually a swatch <laughs> for the nautic cardigan which is in the latest issue of breeze magazine i will show you um in a minute i'm knitting it with yarn from squirrels yarn it's it's a sport weight yarn but the pattern calls for two and a half millimeter needles and so again i know that i'm a tight knitter so i went for size for three millimeters directly but the swatch is supposed to be 20 stitches on 30 rows for 10 centimeters and yesterday i was knitting with some friends and i started measuring the thing and i was like this is never going to work 
<laughs> one of them actually said, I don't need to measure it to know that it's not going to work. So um, when I went home, I cast on again with four millimeter needles this time, and I think it's going to be fine, but I didn't think, well, two and a half millimeters to four? I didn't think I was knitting so tight, really. Hmm. We will see. Anyway, it's a nice, pretty basic card again. And looking forward to cast casting, you know, casting it on for real. So that's my works in progress. Um, I have several things to show you. So the squirrel's yarn thing, I ordered it when I was in Clamart and I received it when I was away. So I got four skeins of this one. It's her Noisette Sport Paste, which is 100% Merino Superwash. Uh, the colorway is called Pierre de Lune Grise. It's very nuanced, light gray with blue undertones. I will have to be careful. I'm not sure I will actually need to alternate skeins. I really hate doing that. I did it on the secret and it worked. So I will cross my fingers that it works as well, but I, mm, I'm not so sure now. We will see. Um, so yeah, it's not a recent purchase. It's just that I recently received it. I ordered other things which arrived when I was gone and what will I start with? I can start with the Breeze magazine, which is really, really nice. So I decided to do the Norte um, cardigan because I liked the shape of it. The magazine itself is really nice. I wasn't sure I would buy it, but when I saw the, the individual patterns on Ravelry, I recognized that there were several of them which I would make. And since I really liked the Woods magazine, well, the Making Stories Woods, um, so that's their, that was their first issue, I yeah, I didn't hesitate for too long. <laughs> so I got that one. And I have three patterns already in my queue. So two sweaters and that one cardigan. And I... Yeah, I'm looking forward to oh yeah the photos are again really really nice and I remembered seeing the behind the scenes on their on their Instagram account and um, made me really want to see more of it and see if she would be looking as cold as she probably really was on that day when they took the pictures yeah you can see goosebumps on, on some of the pictures but apart from that she looks fine I think she didn't lose any finger or toe Anyway, um, I got I got new badges. I got badges from Aubergine and Art on Etsy. She's also on Instagram, but her handle just eludes me. I got three of them. So I got this one, which has knitter on a on an illustrated background of stitches, and I got two Harry Potter themed one. I got the S P E W badge. The Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare. Um, yeah, it's something that only readers of Harry Potter will know. Because that's not in the movies. And the last one is the Hogwarts Knitting Club badge. Got a lot of compliments when I wore that one last week. On the Harry Potter theme, and that's the only thing which I actually bought from the in the shop at the Warner Bros. Uh, Harry Potter Studio Tour is this one, nine and three quarters. I bought it from the, yeah, it's an exclusive platform nine and three quarter pin, which you only find in the shop, which is next to the platform in the studio. Don't find, I don't think you find it in the main shop at the end of the visit. The tour was really, really nice. I really recommend it. The, it was well worth the money. It's funny. So yeah, but the shop was way too expensive. Even that was already way too expensive. But anyway, I got two more pins on Etsy from Makers Merch. That's their name on Instagram. It's uh, Mars and Kelly. Mars I met in Edinburgh and she was lovely. So when I saw these and I really liked them in the first place. So I thought, hmm, let's support that. So it's maker community member. Hope this will focus. Yeah. And you have the Nitrovert badge pin. 
Yeah, I wore both of these last week as well. I think that's all the badges I got and pins, but that's already a good number. That's six of them. <laughs> yeah, my um, pins and badges collection is starting to grow. It's getting a bit out, out of control. I got books. That was the main purchases. Well, I went to Loop in London, so... And since I had decided in the first place not to buy any new yarn, uh, I had to go for books. <laughs> I did buy yarn at Loop, but it's not where well, I didn't buy it. The friend I was with bought it so that I would knit something for her. So, yeah, win-win. Um, from Loop, I got this pair of iron cutters. They are very sharp. I can show you on small piece there. Very sharp. They're also handmade in India and they're fair trade. And I really, really like the rustic look of them. I will not be taking them on board of a plane. I got um, a gauge, 10 centimeters on 10 centimeters, because I have a five centimeters one, uh, which I bought from the little gray girl in Edinburgh but uh, yeah it's really nice but it's not as precise obviously if you have a five centimeter square than if you have a ten centimeter square and it's handmade with the is it a hair or a rabbit I think it's a hair I don't know I know nothing um, yeah I really like it I got two books the third one I got from another bookstore. I got Sequences, which is one of the field guides from Mason Dixon Knitting. I really like that website. And I had seen that booklet, because it's pretty small, on their website, but they don't actually ship to France. So when I saw these um, in London, I thought I should get it. It has four, it has four, four, Patterns based on what they call sequences. Okay. Where's the other one which I wanted to show you? Mm -hmm. That's what they call sequences. Alternate or the alternating between patterns, well, stitches and and uh, styles. This one, the sequences. I also got this book, which I had wanted for at least one and a half years since I first saw it in a bookstore in London. It's Knitting from the North by Hilary Grant, and it has 30 patterns inspired by uh, Fair Isle and Scandinavia. So you have all sorts of patterns in there. You have so you have hats and, and jumpers and headbands and mittens and mitts and cowls. Really, really everything. I really love the pictures. The patterns go from, well, I think they're all fairly simple, like generally speaking, you know, you put, well, the sweaters are bigger projects, obviously, but the fair iron patterns are not that complicated. And I think there, there's a, something for everyone in there. I love the photos as well. Don't know where they were taken, but probably on Orkney, because that's where the, the author lives. Beautiful. So I got this one. And the last book I got was uh, Knitlandia, but I bought it from Foils by Clara Parks. I really like um, her anecdotes of traveling center around knit centered around knitting and yarn. I'm, I've been reading one of the short stories every night before going to bed, basically. And it's nice. That way I don't have my phone uh, up until I fall asleep, you know, and... Um, yeah, it makes me smile. The last one I wrote, I read was actually about her being in Paris. So it was was fun. Yeah, that's all my recent purchases except for one. So my week of vacation was a longer weekend in London and then five days in Scotland. Scotland is probably my favorite place on earth. No, not probably. It is my favorite place on earth by far. And this time I was so lucky again. I went along the North Coast 500 and the weather was glorious all week, apart from the first and last day. Um, really warm as well. I actually tanned a bit. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, um, I burnt actually 
on the side where I was driving. And it was amazing. It was a road trip on my own. And I was lucky enough on my first full day in Scotland to be hosted by the lovely, lovely Louise Hunt from the Caithness Craft Collective. She is amazing. She's she's extremely kind and she was so welcoming it was it was really nice to meet her family and to see her again after edinburgh um yeah it put me on the right track i think for my for my trip so thank you louise if you're watching this thank you for having me and um yeah i hope we meet again in the not too far future and so i went along the north coast 500 which was beautiful i saw some gorgeous beaches there um and and lighthouses and birds and animals and everything and on the third or fourth day i was driving along the coast and there was nothing to see for kilometers which was really funny actually um, a family of four stopped me on the well on one of the passing places on the single track road and she they asked me where does that road go well i gave them the name of the next two villages which i had passed and and they said okay but it, are they real villages yeah okay but do you know how how can we get back to inverness well just follow the road and at some point you will see a sign that points you to inverness there's just one road there you know anyway on that day um enough with my road um anecdotes although i do have quite a few um yeah i passed out of nowhere in the middle of nowhere um a small house small cottage um at the side of the road and it was called they, they had a sign right on the road that said i think it's croft wools and weavers with a with a sheep on it and i thought okay you need to take a break just stop there and take a look and inside the cottage which was open there was a small shop with a man see seated uh, behind a, a gigantic weaving loom it was really really a big loom and he was working there and it turned out that he owned the shop with his wife and they were living in a house just a little bit behind the cottage closer to the coast and they were raising their own gotland sheep and they had the yarn well the the, the fleeces um spun for them and they sold it along with um woven fabrics and um hand spun yarn from the area from Loch Karen and and the apple cross peninsula and other kinds of craft things artisan works and i had to buy a skein of his scotland yarn it smells so nice. I love it. It's surprisingly soft. I know that it looks pretty rustic from there, which doesn't mean itchy by far, but it's really, really soft and it's very, yeah, it's, it's very sheepy. They have it spun iron weight and it's 250 grams. So I don't know exactly how much I have, but it makes me so happy. It was such an amazing, a surprise you know to to meet that shop in the middle of nowhere on that day when i really didn't expect it you know i i passed the the um ripple craft ripples craft um um workshop or die shed uh, on my way and i was like well she was she was away in ireland at that point but and i was like wow if i lived there i would definitely be inspired to make to make things, you know, the colors were amazing and the place itself was awesome. So yeah, but she wasn't there, so I couldn't stop there. So I thought, mm, well, that was my only occasion to actually get yarn on that trip. And then they showed up, you know. Yeah, it made me honestly, incredibly happy to find them. Yeah, that's, uh, I need to find a special project for that skein so that it, reminds me of my trip for a long time but actually that's all i had to show you i had the most amazing vacation that, that week and uh, i can't wait to be back again the whole thing is on instagram and i i made a, a permanent instagram story uh, so that 
so that people who didn't follow me um, in real time could see it again. So if you want to see what I saw on that week, then just head over to my Instagram. Well, thank you again for joining me today. I had a lovely time talking to you. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you will join me for the next one, which should be in three weeks time because in two weeks I'm going to a wedding. Uh, I will have quite a lot of sewing to do in the meantime. And yeah, so I hope I can show you a lot of things next time again. Have a lovely, lovely day or night or week or any time, depending on when you're watching this. Enjoy your knitting, enjoy your sewing, enjoy whatever you're doing and take very good care. See you soon. Bye.